Welcome to Mountain Cooking with Missy. Today I'm going to be making pumpkin roll. Mm -mm -mm. Stay tuned, guys. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing today? So, this is one of my favorite things to bake, and mainly because it's um, a favorite of my mom's, okay? So my mom is 79 years old, and this past summer um, in August, about a week or two before her birthday, she came down with COVID. So my mom is a COVID survivor. Uh, even though she has COPD, she's on oxygen all the time. She, she never had to go on a ventilator. She actually only had to spend about, uh, I think, two nights total in the hospital. And my mom is a miracle. And uh, I'm praising God for that. So my mom's name is Annie. And uh, she loves pumpkin roll. Okay, so that's what I'm making today. I'm making an old time favorite pumpkin roll. Now the pumpkin roll that I'm gonna do for her is not, it's, I'm leaving the cinnamon out because mom can't have cinnamon. She has COPD and she has um, asthma. And um, so she's allergic to cinnamon. It can send her like into a asthma attack. So um, whenever I bake stuff, I leave the cinnamon out if it calls for it. So a, a pumpkin roll, this pumpkin roll is easy. Um, the actual hardest part, I guess the most intimidating part of a pumpkin roll is uh, the rolling up part. And I'm gonna show you how I do that that makes it a little easier. Now we've made these for festivals. Um, through the years, uh, gosh, my church used to do fall festivals and we would make, um, a lot of these. I mean, we would, I forget how many we'd make, uh, but we'd make a lot. We'd make gingerbread, um, and my mom always helped. My mom, um, my mom was a, a great cook, still is a great cook. She, uh, she still cooks when she can. And, uh, but, uh, I learned from my mom and I learned from my mama and I learned from my aunt and some old women in our church uh, through the years, because we always did festivals and stuff. I'm from a, I'm from a mountain town in Southeast Kentucky. So that's where I'm originally from. Now I live in Northern Kentucky, which is near the Ohio border. And uh, we've lived here, we moved about 13 years ago uh, to Northern Kentucky. But anyway, so I've, I've I've been privileged, well, I don't say privileged, I've been blessed to be around a lot of good godly women in my life and around a lot of good cooks. And I remember I had a great aunt, my papa had a sister um, that was born in 1898. So when I was young, back in the 70s, I was a little girl, I, I remember her, I remember going and visiting her. They lived uh, in a place in Leslie County, Kentucky, and it was like time stood still. It's like when you go to their house, they still had an old cook stove that they had to build a fire in to cook. And um, I just loved going to their house because they cooked so good. And um, everything they cooked was good. And they raised everything. And um, so I was brought up just going around these people. And my her name was Lucy, my Aunt Lucy, my great Aunt Lucy. So she was my mom's aunt. And um, she lived to be way up in her 90s. She died, I think, maybe about 10 years ago. But, or it may have been 10 years ago, I don't remember. But she lived, she lived a long life. But I remember her specifically and uh, some of my papa's other sisters that were... Uh, that were just great cooks and um, they made everything. They made everything from scratch. And, um, but I'm, I'm just, I just wanted to just let you guys know about that kind of little brief history about how I learned to cook and some of the people that influenced my life to cook that made me want to cook. Um, so now pumpkin roll, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna show, show you guys. Uh, this pumpkin roll recipe, the first time I ever made it, I got it out of this old cookbook. So this is an old, now the churches and stuff around where we live, and I think everybody uh, gets cookbooks from churches. This was an old cookbook that my mom got. No, actually I got this cookbook. 
before I ever got married, I was like, I think I was 19. I worked at a daycare center in town. And this woman uh, is a member of the Kings Creek Free Will Baptist Church in Kings Creek, Kentucky. And that's where I'm from. That's near where I'm from. Um, she sold these. And I remember buying one, I think, for $5 when I was 19 years old when I was working at a daycare off of her and to help their church out. And it's called Heavenly Dishes. But as you can see, it is old, okay? Now, I often say I don't go, I don't do a lot of res, uh, I go buy a lot of recipes, and I don't. But some things that I never really grew up making, and we never really grew up making pumpkin roll much. Um, the first time I ever really heard about it um, was, I think somebody brought one to a church dinner or something when I was young. And the pumpkin roll recipe is in this book. And um, I want to be, I can share, uh, I, will, I will share that. I'll take a picture of it if anybody wants to see it. Uh, but I'm going to just go with uh, over the ingredients uh, of what goes in here for this pumpkin roll. Now, um, my mom, like I said, loves pumpkin roll. So pumpkin roll is, now this one, because, let me angle my camera so you guys can see. Now, when I upload these videos, sometimes uh, I use a video editing thing on my phone to upload them, but sometimes it cuts the bottom of them off. So it's really hard for me to get a good angle sometimes for you all to see, but I'm gonna do my best. So this is a half of a can of pumpkin. So this is what it's gonna need. You're gonna need a half a can of pumpkin, which is two thirds cup of pureed pumpkin. Now you want pureed pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling. This is an Aldi brand that I use that I think is just as good. Some people use Libby's. Um, and you're going to need a cup of sugar. You're going to need a teaspoon of vanilla. You're going to do, uh, need three eggs. So uh, you want to use room temperature eggs. So um, if you if you forget to leave your eggs out and they're not room temperature, you can put your eggs in a um, in some hot tap water for like a few minutes and that warms them right up. Anytime you're baking, you want to make sure your eggs are room temperature, okay? Now there's no oil or anything in this. You don't have to use any oil. Now the recipe calls for some lemon juice in this. I've never used lemon juice in pumpkin pie filling, uh, in the pumpkin roll filling that I'm doing. Uh, so I just leave it out. If you want to add it in there, you can. So it's going to call, it calls for three quarters of a cup of self-rising flour. And um, let me get that out. So these are little quarter cups that I have. So I'm just going to take three of them. And it's, it calls for a um, teaspoon of ginger. And a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now it calls for a teaspoon of cinnamon, but I'm leaving that out because of my mom. But because it... Uh, because I'm leaving the cinnamon out, I am going to add a little bit of ground cloves. Now, it don't take a lot. Cloves is really strong, and it's only like a pinch. So, like I said, this, don't, this doesn't call for any oil or anything like that. Men and cloves smell so good. And this is your cake. This is your... Uh, it makes like a sponge cake, I guess you want to call it. I just use a, a whisk. Now see where I'm not putting cinnamon in it, this is going to be really yellow looking and blonde. 
and we're, these eggs that I use are farm fresh eggs. Um, a guy that works with my husband gets us fresh eggs, so we take advantage of that because I use a lot of eggs. And these eggs where they're farm fresh are very yellow. They're more yellow and richer than a store-bought egg. So that's all you do. See, that's well mixed. You don't, this is really a one bowl. Other than the, you're gonna do this. This is your uh, sponge cake part and then we'll do the filling. But, so let me get my pan. I wanna show you guys. Now, this, you bake it on a, this is a cookie sheet, and you need wax paper. You have to line it with wax paper, and you gotta spray it. Spray it really good. And this is something I do. I spray, I just spray the bottom of the, of the cookie sheet because look, it makes the paper stick down in there really good. That way when I pour my filling in, I don't have any uh, like spots where it doesn't always go down in there. So, see that? So you're just gonna pour your filling in. Now I wanna give a tip if you, let me get this out of the bowl and I'll tell you guys. Um, these spatula things were the best things invented. They get all the stuff out of your bowls so you don't have a big mess. So if you were to not have ginger on hand or nutmeg or even cinnamon for that matter, if you have pumpkin pie spice, you can use that instead. Just use a heaping teaspoon and that's all you would need in this. Um, you can use, you could even use apple pie spice if you wanted because it's all about the same when it comes to this kind of, they all have cinnamon, they all have ginger, they all have some nutmeg and cloves which is like the staple um, spices for like fall kind of baking stuff. So now you want to spread it even as you can because you don't want any bare spots. If you have a bare spot, once you bake it, now my oven is preheated to 350. You want to make sure you go all the way to the edges because if you're not careful, the edges will get left out. You can see some of the cloves in there. I like, mom likes cloves. She likes it in gingerbread. Even our gingerbread, if we make her gingerbread, we have to leave the cinnamon out. So always give your pans a gentle shake, especially this one. I guess some people, this is a cookie sheet. You could use a jelly roll pan if you wanted. Um, see how even that is? And it's smooth, just like that, okay? So my oven has been preheating to 350 and it's ready. So this is going to go in the oven. Uh, this don't take long, maybe 10 minutes. Just keep an eye on it. You don't have to get it brown. You want it done. You want it to where um, it's all done. And if you take your finger and you tap it, there's no more gooiness or tackiness. So I just keep an eye on it. So I usually don't bake it no more than 15 minutes because it won't take it long. It's thin and it bakes up pretty quick. So when it comes out of the oven, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, now we're gonna start with the best part of the pumpkin roll, which is the filling part. Uh, so the filling is a block of cream cheese. And some people, you can do different kinds of fillings for a pumpkin roll, but this traditionally is, uh, a block of cream cheese, two cups of powdered sugar, and here's my cream cheese. And you want it, um, you want it softened, and 
You could either leave it out or throw it in the microwave for like eight seconds at a time till it's, um, you know, just like soft, but you don't want it melted, but you don't want it cold either. So um, I broke out my old KitchenAid mixer. I've had this thing probably, I know, 10 years. I haven't had it. I mean, a lot of people have had them for like, has KitchenAids for like, a long time, but I think I've had mine 10 years, but they're like the best thing since sliced bread, as they say. So I'm trying to get the best angle so you guys can see. I guess it would help if I plugged it in because you know, nothing works if you don't give it some juice. All right. Now I start whipping mine um, before I add the sugar. Now, if you don't have, now also this calls for a, uh, let me just do a recap. So it's a block of cream cheese. You want cream cheese, don't use reduced fat. You want full fat. Um, an eight ounce thing of Cool Whip. I like the extra creamy. This is the Kroger brand. Uh, the extra creamy actually has real cream. Did y'all know the actual Cool Whip don't have any dairy in it? So, it's kind of hard for me to let you guys see because I'm filming by myself, but um, you want that cream cheese fluffy like that. And to be honest, <laughs> we eat a lot of cream cheese around here. This, this is not a full block and it should be, so I hope it still turns out. I'm just using what I have because uh, it's pouring the rain here today and I don't want to go store just yet. I'm going to try to wait till it stops a little bit but I think it'll still be all right with just a half a block. Um, if you don't wanna use this, if you don't have cream cheese, you can always use a traditional uh, frosting. I'm doing my cup of powdered sugar. You can do buttercream frosting. You can do canned frosting if you want it, which I don't recommend. I don't like canned frosting at all. <laughs> I've always made my frostings homemade. Even if I do, um, I went the other cup of powdered sugar. Even if I make cakes out of a box, which I do a lot, I just doctor them up. I always make my frosting homemade. It just makes such a difference. So you put your powdered sugar, two cups of powdered sugar in with cream cheese. Now, this is where I don't have a full block of cream cheese. I'm not, there it goes. It's coming together. is cream cheese frosting guys right there you could use that just by itself add a little bit of a lemon um, extract like a drop or some fresh lemon juice and you would have the best cream cheese frosting goes good on cinnamon rolls goes good on um, pound cake red velvet cake Italian cream cake, hummingbird cake, spice cake. You can make pumpkin whoopie pies out of them. So here I'm just bringing it all out for you. I mean, there's so many, you would just double that and you would make, that's the best cream cheese. That's a cream cheese frosting right there. But we're gonna add the Cool Whip. So the Cool Whip is gonna make it fluffy. It's gonna make it um, that fluffy, more of a, I don't know, a kind of, a whipped, more of a whipped consistency. That's what you want in a pumpkin roll anyway. Um, so I just add the whole, I'm gonna drop the whole thing. I just add the whole container in at once. And if you do not, if you can, 
fine. Now, I'm not a big user of Cool Whip in general. A lot of times I make my own whipped topping, whipped cream, out of real whipped cream. But if you can't do that, that's when this creamy, it's Cool Whip, it's in a red. See, this is Kroger brand, but if you get the red labels, usually it says extra creamy. Well, right here on the lid, it says it. Extra creamy. Um, and it tastes better than a regular Cool Whip. It tastes more like whipped cream because it actually does have cream. So I'm not gonna like put this on real high because you wanna, you don't want to, uh, you wanna keep it fluffy. So this is more of um, just blending it instead of uh, mixing it on high. scrape my beater down anytime you're mixing with these kind of mixers you can use a hand mixer if you want um you want to make sure you scrape your sides down so i just take my rubber spatula and i go down the bottom And I fold it in. Kenzie want to lick that. Let me push this out of the way a little bit. So see that? So I'm going to pop this in the refrigerator. This is the filling that goes in the middle. See, look at that. Now. Let me give you guys another tip. This right here, just like it is, can be used in a lot of different recipes. And let me just explain. Let me get it up here where y'all can see. This, rest, this right here is a filling for pumpkin roll, but this is the best fruit dip you'll ever have. That is fruit dip, just like it is. You can add a half a jar of like caramel, uh, ice cream topping in this. You can add um, a couple of tablespoons of strawberry jam. You can flavor it. It makes the best fruit dip or leave it just like it is. Um, also, you can take a can of um, drained pineapple, about a half a can of drained pineapple, and add to this too um, and make a great fruit dip. Or you can take this right here and put in about a cup of creamy peanut butter. Yep, creamy peanut butter. Fold that in and pour it in one of those cookie and those cookies and cream uh, pie crust. And you can make your own peanut butter pie and just chill it really good. Fold in maybe some chopped of um, Reese cups and top it with a little bit of a chocolate fudge or something. Mm -mm. See. So this is why I say sometimes you don't need recipes when, I mean, a lot of people I know want recipes, but um, if you just play with stuff, you can learn to cook and not always have to have a recipe. You can, um, you can build on recipes. You can build on stuff you're already doing and kind of create your own. That's basically what I've done through the years. It's just um, trial and error, but that right there, fruit dip, pie filling it's a base for just about anything but we're going to use it of course in our pumpkin roll so i'm going to stick it in the refrigerator and let it chill and i'm going to bring out the uh, pumpkin roll cake part i'll let you guys see it here in a little bit okay you can see it's just about ready to come out of the oven when you give it a touch it's done there's no tacky left and ready to come out. All right, it's all done. So it is still warm. I did let it cool because you're gonna roll it up while it's warm. 
Um, you let it cool for about, you leave it on the wax paper. And this is where it's important to roll it up while it's kind of warm because you're going to let it cool completely. And when you unroll it, it comes, it all stays together better. That way when you put the filling on it, it rolls up better. So hopefully without cracking. I hardly ever get one that doesn't crack at all, but that's okay. They still taste good. So what I do, I sprinkle a little powdered sugar. on it this kind of helps so it doesn't like stick too bad when I start rolling it up you don't want it to stick on it on itself so you just start rolling towards you now this edge got a little too thin so that's okay this edge is a little thinner so that's why it's always important to make sure you get it um, as even as possible. So the edge is a little too crispy, but it's all right. It's still turn out good. See? Now that's it. I want to let it cool. I'm not going to put it in the refrigerator. I want it to cool. Um, out in the room. I don't want to put it in the refrigerator because I don't want it to sweat. And I just let it cool completely. It's going to probably take a couple hours for it to cool completely because when I unravel it is when we put the filling in. You don't want it warm at all in the middle when you put the filling in in a melt. So we'll let it cool. So we'll be back. All right, y'all. I'm back and it's time to uh, roll up our pumpkin roll. And I just want to show you guys, I mentioned this in the beginning by my old cookbook, cookbook that uh, I've had since I was 19. Um, it's, I've even got up in the corner, Missy Fields, my maiden name's Fields. Then after I got married, I went back and put Jones on it. So, um, so of course, Kenzie says she wants this. Look how old it is. But the very first pumpkin roll I ever made, I got it from this book. So this is exactly, um, and I will take a picture of this recipe and post it in the comments when I post the video so you guys can see it. But this is um, one of the first cookbooks I ever bought on my own. My mom had some cookbooks and uh, so anything I ever did tried new, of course I used a recipe, but um, you know, for the most part, all my life, we didn't use recipes much. But, um, yeah, this has got old, like all my old writing in it. You just love stuff like that. It just um, just makes you, uh, I like thumbing through it. And I can remember going through this and thinking, oh, I want to try that first broccoli casserole I ever made. It was out of this book. So, yeah, that's how old it is. So, man, I'm 51. So, anyway, um it's time to roll up the pumpkin roll and um let me fix my camera so y'all can see really well so here's my feeling and when see by rolling this up when it was hot it makes it easier to roll up once you put the filling on in it, and it just peels off. So, there we go. Hopefully you all be able to see it. I want you to be able to get a good enough angle. So I just put it, you take your filling and just put it in different I just put it right in the middle. And I'm gonna take one of these little offset spatulas kind of things. This is what I use the frost cakes with. 
and just spread it. You wanna start in the middle and go out to the edges. Now this is, because I didn't have a complete block of cheese, cream cheese, um, this is a little like, it ain't really runny, but it's not as fluffy as I would like, but it's okay, it's still gonna be good. And let's see, see how it's curled up here. Go all the way out. Now, if you don't like pumpkin, you could do, um, you could take in <clears throat> probably a box of like chocolate cake mix or yellow cake mix and make two, one cake mix will probably make two of these. You can do any kind of um, flavor you want if you don't like pumpkin. So that, see how that does right there? All the way out to the edges. That's plenty good right there. Mm -mm. So I just start on the edge, peel your paper back, take your thumbs and bring it in. Peel your paper back as you go. See how it does? I'm going to turn it around and come toward me. I should have done that to start with, but it's all right. Same. See how it just peels? And what I do, I just go ahead and take and use my paper. See how that does? Now turn it over to where the seam, turn it over to where the seam's down. Now I wrap, I wrap mine up usually in Reynolds wrap um, and chill them. You can freeze these for, you can make them like a week ahead of time for like Thanksgiving or whatever. I have a little frosting left uh, filling, so I'm just going to, Fill in the cracks here. You can put these up in the freezer. They'll keep, uh, as long as you seal them good, they'll keep probably, I don't know. It's hard. I usually never, I've never frozen one past a couple of weeks. But you can make them ahead of time. You just fill that in. So this is my mom's, but I'm gonna cut into the edge of it and let you guys see it. My contraption here that I got, I don't wanna, I mess with it too much phone fall out. But if you, when you cut these, big knife but I just have to use my little knife when you cut them just cut right into it just like that you can use a string to cut them if you've watched me do my cinnamon rolls uh, you can do a string Use a string to cut them. But if you let that chill, and like I said, the filling is not as fluffy as I would like because I didn't have a full block of cream cheese. So mine's a little like too thin, but I mean, you could see, I won't make a mess, but y'all gotta see me take a bite. <laughs> 
Kenzie, you want to buy it? Kenzie's coming. See, look at that. Yeah, it's a little, like, it's a little too um, runny. Not really runny. Yeah, it's hard to say the word, but maybe you all can think of the word for it. But normally, this would be, like, a little fluffier. But it's because I didn't have a full block of cream cheese. And... Mmm, 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 that's good. And you honestly don't miss the cinnamon in it. You would think without the cinnamon, it would kind of have a, but it don't, the cloves made up for the cinnamon. Oh gosh, Kenji gotta come here and get about before I eat this whole thing. Mm-mm-mm. That's good, God, I'm telling you. My mom will love this. This is her favorite, and she likes it. So, whatever my mama wants, I'm going to make it for her. So, that right there is how to make a pumpkin roll. And see, there's no cracks. Now, every now and then I get a crack, but that's okay. I'm just going to roll this up in some plastic wrap, and then I'm going to roll it up in Reynolds wrap. And then I'm going to put it in the fridge and let it stay chilled. You want to keep them chilled. Bye. Lord, what's wrong with the frosting? Well, it's because I left the, uh, I didn't have a whole block of cream cheese. Oh my goodness. You remember? Because, yeah, she just got out of the shower. But it's so good. You don't miss the cinnamon at all. It's really good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. The frosting, like I said, is just a little runnier than what I would like because I didn't have a full block of cream cheese, but that's why it's like that. But, mm -mm. good. It's good. All right. All right, guys. So there you have it. I don't need big, all right. It's a lot of sugar. Mm -mm -mm. But there you have it. You want the last bite? There you have it, guys. A delicious pumpkin roll and it's messy but my mom will love it so anyway if you make this let me know and I'm sorry about the camera being like that I had it set up um, if you make this let me know I'd be happy uh, I would love to see your pictures or let me know how it turned out and um, and honestly if you just do it the way I did it look at there I already got it on me without no apron. If you just do it the way I did it, pretty much guys, it turns out about all the time without cracking. If you just roll it up when it's kind of warm and do it like that, it will be, it'll be good. So, uh, there it is. All right guys, uh, thank you for watching and I do appreciate all you guys watching and all your kind comments. I tried to go back and, um, I try to go back and um, and reply to everybody's comments, and and I do appreciate you all watching, and I appreciate it uh, if you share my videos. I just got started at the first September seconds when I launched my page, and uh, it'll be two months almost, and I do appreciate all your all's um, support and all the followers I'm already getting, and I appreciate if you uh, share the videos. Uh, and just, you know, spread the word. And because I love showing people how to cook. I love just doing what I do. And it's just me. And I love, this is like a um, part of um, what I like to do. And I like to just share with other people and show people different things and how to, how I cook and hopefully um, help out and give some tips. And I do appreciate uh, all your all's uh, kind words and got people, I've been, I've been getting people from Australia, England, so that's awesome. I do appreciate that. So, all right, guys, y'all have an amazing day. Uh, if you make this pumpkin roll, let me know, but I will be posting the uh, recipe in the comment. I'll take a picture out of the book and put it in the comment and... Uh, and just watch the video and that's usually the best way to learn is just to watch somebody so 
Y'all have an amazing day. Thank you for watching Mountain Cooking with Missy, where it's nothing fancy, just good eating. Bye, guys.